What's up everybody? Welcome to day four here in Dallas. I'm not gonna be here saying, oh, I won a lot and shit. Because man, poker, whenever you are arrogant, I feel like whenever, whenever I am arrogant, poker just punches me in the face. And whenever I'm humble, poker just gives me a, a gift. Man, I, I swear I'm not forcing you. I just feel that happens so many times already in my life that the more humble I get, the better my results will be. So let's see. I don't know what's gonna happen. This is the beginning of the episode. I'm, I just woke up. I'm about to go to the gym that there is in this park. I'm gonna show you guys soon. So now I'm gonna work out, run a little bit, and then hit the shower and start my day. Well guys, this is the gym. Pretty simple, but it's enough for me. I like to be in contact with the nature too. Yesterday I did some bars here. Today I'm gonna do some push-ups and then running. And now I'm gonna turn off the camera and do my shit. What's up everybody? We're back to Texas Card House Dallas, which in my opinion is the best 2-5 I have ever played inside the US. And believe me, I've played in a lot of places so far. But this game at TCH Dallas plays so deep and has so much space to make profit that I see no place that I would rather play 2-5 No Limit Hold'em than Texas Card House in Dallas. I buy in for 750. First hand, I get King Jack Offsuit from the button. High Jack raises to 15. In this spot with this hand, I'm gonna 3-bet or fold here. And I decide to 3-bet. I make it 55. Surprisingly, hijack quickly 4 bets to 225 and of course I'm gonna fold. Next hand I'm in the cutoff with ace jack offsuit, under the gun plus 1 raises to 20, low jack calls, under the gun plus 1 is a good player, I will either fold or 3 bet here, but after low jack calls I just get a great spot to squeeze and 3 bet in position, so that's what I do. I 3 bet to 85, I would rather making a little bigger like 100, but 85 is fine as well. Only under the gun plus 1 calls, we go heads up to the flop, which comes a pretty wet and connected one. As I said before, plus 1 is a good player, I believe his range has many pocket pairs and suited connectors. And as I didn't get any relevant equity in this board, when he checks to me, I decide to check back instead of c-betting. Turns a king of diamonds, I don't have any diamond in my hand. He checks to me and I check back. We miss the river, he checks to me, I check. He shows pocket sixes and it's good. I change seat. A good thing from TCH Dallas is that they have so many 2-5 tables that you got a lot of options if you want to change tables. And they usually do it pretty fast, which is nice. First hand in this table, I'm in the hijack with pocket 8s. Middle position raises to 20. I 3 bet to 65. Only middle position calls. We go heads up to the flop, which comes a great one. 7-6-4 rainbow. I got an over pair and a gut shot. He checks to me. I decide to go with 2 thirds of the pot. Looking back, I would rather go with 50%, like betting $60, but 80 is fine as well. He folds and we win the pot. Next hand, I'm in the under the gun plus one. I see 9-8 suited and fold. And I put this hand here because I know you guys think that, many of you guys at least think that this hand is a good hand to open raise. But if you go to the ranges here, that GTO wizard advises, you should be open raising 9-8 suited here in a very, very low frequency. Next hand, I'm in the low jack with ace jack suited. I raise to 20. The same good player from last table in my left re-raises to 70. Most likely, I'm gonna 4-bet here. And to make the situation more interesting, small blind calls. And as you see in the other side of the table, I don't think he is that strong, to be honest. I don't see him having a skin. Maybe he has a swim, but I don't think so as well. So I think I'm ahead of his range. And as I was already gonna 4-bet the guy that 3-betted me, I believe I still have a good situation for a 4-bet. So that's what I do. I 4-bet to $270. He quickly shoves all in. He has more chips than I do. So he puts me all in for $820 total. And I just can't call here. We all fold and he wins the hand. Losing $300 so far. The next hand I'm in the cutoff with Ace-Queen offsuit. And I open raise to 20. Only big blind calls. And the flop comes Ace-Jack-Deuce-Rainbow. I'm rarely losing this hand. I'm gonna see bet here. I see bet to 35. He quickly calls. Turn is a 3. A blank. I'm gonna keep betting here. He has like 300 25 in his stack and I'm gonna make a sizing where I put him all in in the river so I bet $80 he calls again which is great news I will rarely be losing this hand river is a three of spades he checks to me I put him all in for 245 he calls I show the bad news and we win <laughs> the 
Next hand, I'm in the cutoff with pocket nines. Under the gun raises to 15, middle position calls, and I'm definitely gonna 3-bet here in position. I 3-bet to 65, everybody folds and I win the hand. Next hand, I'm on the button with pocket jacks. I raise to 15, only big blind calls. Big blind is a great guy, his name is Ricky. Flop comes ace, queen, four, rainbow. He checks to me, and I'm gonna keep betting here. This flop is definitely better for my range than his. I bet one third, he calls, turns a six of spades, he checks to me again, and man, just my intuition told me that it was better to bet here after he checks to me. Maybe I would extract value from flush draws, straight draws or something. So that's what I do. I bet $20, he calls, River is a five. Don't bet. Randy, you <laughs> love, man. So, I, I have you jacks, I have jacks. And man, he's such a good guy. I don't know why he did that, but I appreciate it, like, thank you. Next hand, I'm in the small blind, under the gun straddles 10, and I see 10 jack suited from the small blind, 3 players limp, and here I'm gonna raise, the question is how much, I decide to make $100, only cut off calls, we go heads up to the flop, flop is a good one, jack 8 deuce with 1 diamond, I'm gonna see bet here, effective stack is 1050, I see bet to 110, little less than half pot, cut off quickly calls, I still think I'm winning though, and the turn comes a 10 of spades. This turn will usually not favor my range at all, but in this particular case, it's great for my hand. So here, instead of betting, I decided to check and maybe open space for him to bet. Which doesn't happen, he checks back. River is a 3 of hearts, and now we're gonna go to value town. I decide to bet 2 thirds of the pot, 275. When he did that, he looked at me, and that's something you guys should be careful with. Just don't give any information, just stand still and wait for what he's gonna do. This is not a call yet, and maybe some people would fall into this trap of thinking this is a call. In the end, he decides to call, I show the two pair, and it's good. Winning $290 for now. Next hand, I'm in the small blind with ace 4 suited. Button open raises to 20, and I 3 bet to 80, and he calls. We go heads up to the flop. Flop comes queen, 6, deuce with 2 clubs. I'm gonna definitely see bet. I see bet 120, 3 quarters of the pot. He calls, turns a queen of diamonds, I miss. And this queen makes it less likely for me to have a queen. Also, if I had aces, kings, jacks, tens, I would probably check call here instead of betting again. So for this reason, I decide to check, and he bets 200. We're playing really deep here. If I call the 200, I'm gonna hit my flush around 18% of the times. And I believe I have enough implied odds of if I hit my flush, I lead in the river and I extract a lot of value from him. So I decided to call here and see a river, which is one that we miss, another queen. I check again, he checks back, and he shows fives, and it's good. Pretty interesting play by him. I wonder if I check raise the turn, what he would do. Break even for now. Next and last hand of this episode. I get pocket kings in the cutoff. I post 5 because I just came back to the stable. High jack, which is the same player from the last hand, raises to 25. Of course, I'm gonna 3 bet here. I 3 bet to 85. Only high jack calls. We go heads up to the flop, which comes a great one. 2, 6, 7 with 2 hearts. He checks to me and I'm definitely gonna keep betting. I bet 105, around half pot, and then he check raises to 500. Man, this board is a pretty safe one, one where he would have many suited connectors that have flush draw or open-ended flush draw or gut shot flush draw. I'm losing for 6-7 suited, I'm losing for 7s, for 6s, for deuces maybe, if he open raises, and he probably does. So I'm losing to a few combination of hands, but I'm also ahead of many ones where he has like open-ended and flush draw, gut shot and flush draw, pair and flush draw. So here there's no chance I'm folding. I'm between calling or shoving. As you, ha as you guys see, my starting stack was $1,270. So if I call this bet, I'm gonna have like 680 behind. And if I call, I'm gonna just be committed to the pot and let him see the turn for free because he already put the 500. So instead of calling, I believe the best play here is actually shoving, and he will be already committed to the pot with the hands that I'm beating, like the ones that I just told you so. So I decide to shove all in, he quickly calls, he asks if I wanna run it once or twice, I decide to do it twice, first board comes a 7 of clubs and a 10 of hearts, second board a jack of diamonds and an 8 of spades. It's important to mention that 
One of those cards was a diamond actually. So I had the king of diamonds and I was flush draw in this second hand. But we missed both boards. He shows six, seven of spades, having top two pair in that flop and he wins the hand. Well, well, another day leaving early than expected. I honestly see no escape from the hand versus that guy. He was very aggressive, a very good player, but man, that flop 6-7-3 with two hearts, like with two diamonds, sorry, and I had a king of diamonds, like there's just no escape, you know? After I bet 105, he bets 500, and I have like six, 500 plus the six, 685, like I had to shove. It's not even a call, it's a shove, you know? He's committed already to whatever uh, I decide to do all in, and he has top two. And we run it twice and we don't get any. Man, uh, I don't, I'm not feeling bad by how I played this hand. Uh, that's the most important. Hopefully soon things will come back our way. Now I'm losing this amount after all the sessions I played. Uh, I think I played around 25 to 26 hours. There, I'm gonna leave it here too. And yeah, now we're losing something like 100 or 200 dollars total plus the rake which i guess is close to 200 200 something and yeah hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you're not subscribed yet consider doing the mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player and see you next time thank you guys for watching i'm in vegas right now and trust me things are going crazy here like i'm loving the experience i'm playing higher stakes so stay tuned because there's a lot of things coming also follow me on instagram because you'll be able to see everything that is happening on pretty much real time while here it takes a while so i dropped the episode hope you guys enjoyed it and see you next time